We're having a thoughtful oversight discussion and involve engaging in strategic focus back and forth between branches of government in a discussion that I believe will generate ideas that deserve consideration. We're not complaining, so then it's irrelevant to what the mayor said. And just to follow up, the mayor also put out his own survey saying about 90% of the customers of restaurants like the grading system. And I'm glad to hear that. And I agree, and I'm not at all surprised by that number. I'm a little more surprised it is at 98%, quite frankly. No one here is saying get rid of the grading system. Because New Yorkers like it, because it's important, we want to make sure it's consistent, it's fair, and that that letter on your restaurant tells the real true story. And that we do it in a way that keeps people healthy and keeps restaurant open. So the idea of getting rid of the grading system is not on the table in my restaurant, so to speak. So I, I'm not surprised by that. I'm surprised it's not a little higher, actually. Yes, do you feel that, based on this survey and what you've heard from restaurant owners, that uh, that this inspection system is not only for the better of New Yorkers and clean restaurants, but is it really a, a money-making operation? I have a worry. I, you know, I can't conclude anything yet. We haven't gone into the hearing and we haven't reviewed all the data. What I can tell you is these are the facts, right? Over 70% of New York City restaurants are get, or close to 70%, are getting aid the top grade. And the Department of Health believes that number will go up. Terrific. But nonetheless, fine generation has gone up. Preliminary budget documents propose more fines next year for restaurants. How can more restaurants get the top grade and be generating more fine revenue? They're simply inconsistent facts that raised me to have a profound concern that this could be about revenue generation. Yes? So you're not saying whether the system is fair or not right now. Is that my understanding? Do you just want to find out? I, I have a lot of concerns. I have deep concerns. and I had deep concerns going into this survey about the system being unfair. Why did I have those concerns? Because as I went out and did meetings all across the city with different merchants, block associations, chambers of commerce, et cetera, et cetera, I began to hear a, a theme from people who owned restaurants about how deep the fines were that they were getting, how confused they were about the system, and how cumbersome it became. And I began hearing this literally everywhere from Chelsea to Howard Beach to the Bronx to the North Shore of Staten Island. It didn't matter where I was, I was hearing this over and over. So that raised for me the concern we had to drill deeper. I really think there are inconsistencies in this system that we can fix to make it fairer and make it better. I do not think the system is set up in a way right now that is the best that it can be. I don't want to get rid of the grades, but I want to make changes in the system. Can you please allow me a follow-up question? This would be for the owners. It seems to me that they're paying more money, that this system is costing them, well, costing them a lot of money. Are they passing these costs to the consumers? Is this system a threat to the consumers in that regard? You know, no one likes fines. Will we all agree on that? Um, but the the deeper problem is is that restaurant owners are having to, if they can afford to, go outside of the in the system that was designed to protect public uh, safety um, and create safe restaurants to to get answers. We're getting conflicting information from one inspector to the next to the next. We're getting conflicting information from one adjudicator to the next adjudicator to the next adjudicator. You have to spend all day for, for a hearing and then you get conflicting information. And when you get this kind of conflicting information from the source itself, on the ground and on the adjudication level, and then looking into the code for sort of the final answer, on all three levels, you don't, you don't know what to do. So as you described, you spend money on consultants, you spend money on attorneys, you spend money perhaps on PR agencies. You burn precious time when you could be creating a beautiful environment for the citizens of the city, tourists, people who come in. And so, yeah, the fines are an issue, but let's put the fines just in one, in one category. It's creating a, a, a form of, of kind of a, a mayhem. Of course, consumers like the grading system. It's, it, it gives a clear, simple sort of yes, and eh, or no. But, they, but the consumer doesn't see what's going on behind the scenes. 
the, the, the letter grading system is a, is a good one, can be a good one. Let's shore it up and let's give the inspectors, the adjudicators, the legislators, and the public clear direction and information on how to be safe and how to comply. It'll be to everyone's benefit. That's all. So is your asking. sushi more expensive now or not because of those fines? And just be more we, have, we do not pass on the cost, so we suffer um, ourselves to answer your question directly. It's the cost of doing business. Thank you. Yes. Can you just one example of that type of inconsistency? Sure. Um, well, Herb, do you want to give an inconsistency where you have different things from an inspector? Well, it, it, it's even more than that. Uh, we can't afford to take, yeah, and, and we can't afford to take and bump our prices. The restaurant industry in general is on the stage with the cost of food, the cost of the transportation of food, the cost of rents, the cost of overheads. I don't want to change my price a dollar because I will lose customers. You can't keep passing on and passing on. You have to eat it. And where do you eat it from? You eat it from your own pay, your own profit that you want to take home yearly. We take home less percentage. I'm sure Scott and everybody in our industry is taking less profit home because of this wonderful health department. And the workers suffer. And we can't, the workers suffer, we can't pass on a raise, but we can't bump the price one dollar. Can, can I hear that for a Well, the question was directed at Mr. Yes, Trump. and he'll get, so just wait. This gentleman doesn't do press conferences and we're <laughs> every day, and if he wants to share something with us, he will, and I'll go back to Scott. Go ahead, we're finished. Yes. Uh, when we get a certain health department expert, inspector that comes in and tells us to do it this way and do it that way and fine us. We go to the board and the judge sees the senselessness of that fine, refers to his book and waves the fine. This is after we spent all day in court. He's made the 12 points, 8 points. Why? Why isn't he enforcing the law? Because the law differs in every inspector and every judge. Scott so I want to give a specific sure. example of that. Sure. Um, so here's a, a specific example. Um, sushi rice. Inspe three different inspectors, three different adjudicators have given us the following range. Well, sushi rice, are, are you preparing sushi rice with vinegar? Well, then that's inherently, uh, you're allowed to, to use it for a certain amount of time because it's prepared with vinegar, it can stay out longer. No, that's not an acceptable standard. You have to account for and document how long the rice is left, left out for, whether it's made with vinegar or not vinegar. So vinegar has nothing to do with it. Time has something to do with it. And then you're told, then you're told uh, that simply- By a third. By, by, by a third inspector that, that it's not vinegar, it's not time, you can't have rice out, throw it away. So we've had that on the, on the inspector level. We've also had it on the adjudicator level. So the amount of time and resources that go in to, uh, to sort of reconciling conflicting information, and then you look in the code, and you do get a little bit of sort of mixed messages in the code as well. And, and what, you know, where do you go? What do you do with that? I mean, one of, our, one of our most sort of harrowing examples, and I have to like commend her and other restaurant owners for sort of coming forward as boldly as you are and others are, you know, there's a lot of fear. Will, will there be retribution? Will there, will, will there be problems? Again, with cultural um, disconnects, there's a lot of fear not wanting to share some of the stories. But we had over $10,000 worth of beautiful sushi-grade tuna that had been prepped with bare hands, a, a full tuna, that was tossed into a garbage bag, garbage bag, leech poured all over it, destroyed, screaming, don't talk to me, get out of my... So I, I don't want to make, I, I don't want to sound sort of um, hysterical with this, but on the ground, on the actual ground, the stress, the confusion, the inconsistency is manageable. On the adjudication level, um, the stress of the time and the inconsistency is, is unmanageable. But again, there are examples of how it can work. Let's just, let's just get it consistent, let's get education and training, get everyone on the same page in partnership as we're described. It can work. Other questions? Uh, yeah, Christian. So, so how do you do this go about sort of erasing these inconsistencies that you and others describe in the grading system? I mean, does this require legislation? Um, you know, the mayor said yesterday, you know, siphon 
said that the complaints are going to fall on deaf ears on the other side of City Hall. So how do you partner with them, and does this require actual legislation? I mean, some of it could be legislated. Some of it, I hope, will end up being parts of conversations that come out of the hearings. Because again, I don't think you know we're talking about. I honestly don't. I'm not trying to be cheeky. Think we're talking about complaining here. We're talking about constructive ideas that may could make the system better. One of the things we're, we're talking about, right, is clarity. The Los Angeles system, which in essence is what the city says they based the New York system on, has a grading and scoring system which we believe is clearer and easier to understand. That would be one step we would want to talk about, one step we could take. Also, I think if you had an ombuds person within the Department of Health who was there to have, say, Scott Paul and say, hey, I'm confused, I want to do the right thing, but I'm being told I can't have sushi rice out at all. I'm being told I can have it out for a period of time. I'm being told I can have it out if I'm using vinegar. What do I do? An ombuds person can help you answer those questions without all of the fine stress and confusion is another thing in the right direction. We also could do things that might seem silly but would make a big difference. You know, right now when the inspectors come into the restaurant, just for a regular inspection, they're wearing jackets that say Department of Health Food Inspector on the back. Mm -hmm. Think of what that does to your lunch hour rush, right? <laughs> when they walk in, then they have to come. I understand when you're serving food. If they came just in, in street clothes, that would make a big difference. If at the end of the inspection, they, they you know, uh, gave an inspector code of conduct to each of the restaurants and said, this is how we were supposed to act if you believe we didn't feel free to call the ombuds person to you know, raise concerns about it. The Department of Health could hold periodic summits with restaurant tours, the restaurant association throughout the city or borough base and have conversations on how they could update, make things better. Some of that could be legislated, but I think it is easier just to do that through conversation process. But we'll see where we you know, end up at the end of all. And have you started that conversation process? How were these initial ideas received by the Department of Health or the mayor? Well, clearly not so great yet because we don't have them in place. But, uh, you know, uh, we are continuing the conversation and we'll keep working on it. Other questions? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, there's been a suggestion also of part, like, regarding waiving fines if a restaurant doesn't initially get an A and then appeals and then gets an A to waive those fines as well. Is that an idea that you would support? Yeah, you know, I mean, we're, we're open to considering any ideas. Another idea as it relates to, so if you got a B or a C and then you go and you appeal it or you fix it or whatever, and then you become an A. Well, let me back up for a second. If you're an A, the like first round A, so to speak, you're not inspected for the next year. But not supposed to be, I'm sorry, not inspected for the next six months unless there's complaints, right? But you're not on the rent, just general rotation of being inspected for the next six months. But if you were a B and you become an A, you are still inspected as if you were a B. One step we definitely think should be considered is that if you are an A or you become an A, you should be put on the A inspection schedule because you've earned the A. An A is an A or it's not an A. It's not an A slash B. If we're treating you as a B, even though you got an A, then the sign should say you're an A slash B, not that you're an A. But the other idea, you know, I don't know that we've really looked into that in depth yet, but obviously we're going to consider every suggestion we hear today. We've got time for one more. Yeah. Uh, 